welcome to Daniel's Country Kitchen on a very wet March day. Oh, you know, it's nice, isn't it? Uh, aren't we fed up with the rain? Yeah, we are. Uh, the only good thing about it is uh, we still have some good products. And we have some lovely wild and garlic. Obviously, it's a seasonal wild garlic. Look at that. Beautiful. So, what are we, we doing? can smell it. Huh? Mm. Yeah. Uh, a lot of things we can make with wild garlic, but one thing uh, to know about wild garlic is very pungent, it's very strong, and a lot of people don't like it sometimes because it's too powerful. So uh, what we have to do there, you can see, so we're going to make a beautiful uh, velouté of uh, wild garlic that I'm going to slightly cut the strong flavor with a little bit of spinach, a little bit of leek, which we have in here, the two, two of that, mm -hmm. and a beautiful uh, chicken stock in here, quite light. You can use vegeta vegetable stock if you want. Of course, the best is always to make your own vegetable yeah. or whatever. But uh, I've made a, a chicken stock. Light, beautiful and all. A little bit of uh, potatoes, just to make it only about 100 grams here, just to make it a little bit more smooth and soft and everything, so we don't have this massive flavor yeah. of uh, of wild guy. It could be really powerful. Uh, great season, you can find that in the wild actually, because that's why it grows. If you've got a, a nice woodland next to you, whatever, you're likely to be able to find some of them. All four seasons. Yeah. Or of of course, but as you know, uh, otherwise you buy it from your your suppliers like for season. Eh? Great, so it should be good. But but uh, worth having a look. Uh, it's a short season. Worth having a look. Uh, funny enough, the, the season we can carry on a bit. Yeah, the season yeah. of wild garlic. Funny enough, start up, uh, early in the south and go up 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 up. Further north. And further north as you go, and and there's a kind of short story which I learned when. I, uh, not long ago, then, uh, when the Roman, when the Roman was in Britain, uh, uh, they, they they was counting on wild garlic because they used to move up every two weeks oh, okay. within within all the, the troops and yeah, everything, yeah. and they knew that the plenty full of food at that time of the year was wild garlic, so they could feed the soldier every two weeks because every two weeks in another area was a wild game growing so you go from south to north you know what i mean yeah, yeah. it was quite a funny story and very interesting it so but it's not just cooking we're actually it's educational it is but i mean because there's always a purpose and yeah, a yeah. story behind any yeah. food of course and yeah. we forgot then uh, after world war ii and uh, when it was russian some people used to forage much more than they do now so anyway here we go great just a little bit of story for you guys okay Okay. okay, so right. uh, yeah, we're going to use uh, what we call a thermonix, the machine, okay. yeah? Okay, and uh, let's go. Try it, let's go. Super. Right, so we've got all the ingredients there, so we're going to put them in what we call a thermomix. It's a machine, it's a, like a, a blender, food processor, but it can heat, it can cut, it can ground, it can uh, everything about it. So, like we said, a little bit earlier, so I'm going to put a little bit of fresh leeks in here, a couple of potatoes, a bit of spinach, and obviously our main ingredient, which is the beautiful wild garlic so I'm going to put half of it now and just before we blitz it at the end I'm going to put some fresh leaves in it to keep the color vibrant and the flavor and obviously lovely stock and a bit of seasoning so that's what we do now so let's put that in, in here I mean look at that oh machine a bit of that yeah a little bit of leek <laughs> Fantastic. It's a good machine. You, you, you think that there is a lot in here, but there is not a lot in here. And half of that, and I'm going to blend all that in a minute, but I need also to put a nut of butter. So you didn't have a thermomix? So if you don't have a thermomix, you can do that in a pan. Okay, okay of course. So you put a, a casserole, a little bit of uh, olive oil, a nut of butter in it. And you sweat your potato first if you obviously add potatoes to it after that you threw uh, your uh, wild garlic a little bit half of it keep always the half the other half to have an instant color and fragrance a little bit of spinach a little bit of leek a little bit of parsley all everything green no watercress because watercress on his own is another soup it's it's not it's not to mix obviously excuse me and uh, and uh, you can do that in a pan add your stock to it let it simmer not too long because uh, the best is almost even actually to reduce your stock by half first and put that so you've got an instant soup. You cook it for a few minutes, that's all, and you blitz it down. You add the cream at the end, drop a little oil in, the, in a lovely plate, and you eat your soup. Thermomix will give me, uh, and after that you blitz it, of, of course, in, in a normal food processor, but that will give us all together.
Okay, so we need a nut of butter which I'm it. We put a nut of butter in it because it's a system which uh, does the heating as well. So you need to have a sort of uh, um, of uh, butter or oil, something like that, so so that it doesn't warm up dry. So it makes the blend on its own. Yeah, and we need to add a little bit of pepper, not too much because it's also a little bit peppery, like like would be uh, watercress, you know. And just a touch of salt for now, only, only. And we're going to blitz it. And, okay, so that's what that's what we've done there. So we're going to put that all together. Okay. And we're going to warm up the mix, the, the mix on that one. And that's why we do in summer mix. So you put a timer there. It's about five minutes, it's a max. So you don't want to be okay, maybe three, even three minutes or four minutes. Put the temperature on, so I want to raise about to 80 degree max. And after that, we put that like that. Next stage, we're going to add the stock in it, yeah? And after that, a bit of the cream, and we're going to blitz the whole lot. All right, so three and a half minutes until it goes up to that temperature. Okay, so we've got the, the, the first part there. Look at that. Look at the color. That's why that's it's really interesting. Put that back down there. Yeah? Beautiful color. And can you smell already? Mm. How beautiful is that? Right, so I'm going to put a little bit of liquid now. So that was three minutes on 80 degrees? Yeah. Yeah, because I don't want to heat it up. I want to keep the color, you see. And I'm going to put another little bit like that in here. And keep the rest for the very last minute. And now we're going to cook it. Because now it's not cooked, it's only pre-cooked. Pre so we're going to close that down. We're going to put another about 11 minutes max. Yeah. Okay, and we're going to push it to 90. And we're going to put it on. And after we're going to mix it. And now it's all cooking with some fresh leaf in it. And uh, so it's going to really be cooking slowly, but keep the color. And at the end, we're going to add a little bit more fresh leaves in it to just press the color, a touch of cream seasoning soup down. If you don't have, uh, obviously, a thermomix, but most chef have food processor. Perfect. Some of them as well, like this one, heat up, so it makes your soup in it. If you make a big batch, like we said earlier, you start in a pan and, and finish, and after you use your hand blender and you mix it. The advantage of that, you make the soup really smooth because of the speed it turns. Okay? So we'll see that later on, guys. Oh, that's all we got. Wow. So the good thing is, you can see in here, the, the thing it's the, the control of the heat. The problem of, of, uh, uh, of greens, generally speaking, who contain a lot of chlorophyll, uh, if you overcook it, it becomes brown. It's normal because they lose the coloring and the vitamin, everything. If you do the, on low heat and you do it properly, you should keep the green, which is the chlorophyll, the goodness, all this lovely vitamin, earthy flavor, uh, iron, everything in it, magnesium. So that's the thing. So now we're going to blitz it, add a touch of cream and a bit of seasoning. As you can see, it hasn't barely been seasoned. So let's... It's going to make a lot of noise. Yeah, so... I need also to, what, so you can see the color. That's it. what is important is to keep the color. Like I said, the green, the chlorophyll, the vitamin, everything, not, not brown. You don't want to do that. Otherwise, you may as well drink the liquid and just get rid of the rest, if you know what I mean. And that's what's happened all the time when people could, whether it's a broccoli, which people boil to death, or spinach, whatever. This is not the point. You know, you need to keep the original flavor and be gentle with it. Yeah? So what we're going to do in here now, we're going to add a little bit more stock so the soup is not too thick but just elegantly done. Now we're going to add a little bit of cream like that to make it like a velouté, very smooth, very delicate. Also, we need a little bit more seasoning which we've been very careful at the beginning. The reason we're careful at the beginning because if you put too, too much salt sometimes it changes a little bit the dynamic of the, of the color itself but also is because you cannot take salt out, you can always add it. And people need to be always careful, especially for soup. Sometimes a lot of, uh, of chef or housewife or house husband, whatever, 
they make the soup and straight away put a lot of seasoning in it and suddenly you realize it's too salty. So gradually you, you build it, it's much better. Now we're going to put some live leaves in here to give this really pungent and interesting flavor. Okay, another drop of that. And we're going to beat again everything to make the soup as smooth as possible. Okay, so that's the result I wanted now. Uh, then, then we really, really got the green, really got the silky color. So you can say, like I said earlier, you can do that with a hand blender if you're in a big hotel or big restaurant, whatever. You can do it in a food processor. Well, that's what we call a thermomix. Quite a few chefs will be familiar with it. It's uh, mainly in every restaurant now, every pub generally have a thermomix. But look what we're looking for. This is the silky, silkiness of it. Look how beautiful is that. Mm. So, you and I are going to have a soup now. It's not finished. Don't go anywhere, right, young man. And the last touch, don't move. Ah. A tiny drizzle of organic olive oil. Et voilà. Okay, so we have it in here. Wild garlic velouté. Yes, we cut it a little bit. We put a little bit of spinach and a little bit of leek. All still green uh, kind of vegetable, but it's to take this super powerful flavor of the wild garlic, which sometimes people don't quite like. So we'll have, we got a really good balance, but the wild garlic will be the big star. So if you want some wild garlic and it's a season, four season is the place to get it.